Today's High Watt Soundbite is all about composing music for horror films. Well, I am very excited about today's session. You know, this whole business of composing and scoring music to picture, this is one of my most favorite practices in the studio. I love working with picture. You know, even in situations where I haven't been commissioned to do so, a really good piece of advice was given to me many years ago when I first started getting into composition for film. Somebody just said, oh yeah, don't wait till you're commissioned to do that stuff. Just go ahead, think of the maybe a really great scene of a movie that you love, or just jump on the internet and, and look for something to inspire you to write something. There is just no shortage of incredible content on the internet. I mean, absolutely mind-blowing what you can find if, if you spend an hour looking for some really cool inspirational stuff. If you're going to do that, I strongly recommend hitting the mute button on your speakers because sometimes when you hear a piece of music with a picture, it can have a very kind of permanent effect on your brain and you sort of like won't get the same inspiration from that picture that you will if, uh, if you just don't hear any kind of music with it at all that's ever been associated with it. Well, often what I'll do is I'll find like a short video on the internet that just kind of really blows my mind. I'll screen capture that thing, I'll load it into my DAW, and I'll just do a really kind of rudimentary edit on that video to just kind of bring it up to speed and then the tempo that I'm working at. And then I'll just go ahead and score a, an awesome track to that video. The beautiful thing about doing that, of course, is that when you're finally finished, you just dust that video and you're left with a, a music cue that is not only just really killer sounding and, and, and inspired, but really useful, particularly if you're adding it to some sort of library that's going to be looked at and, and, and used later for other pieces of picture. You know, in a case like that, when you take the time to actually create really good stems of your mix, you can get a lot of placement for something like that because if you give your client the ability to really almost be able to remix your track, man, great things can happen because often what will happen, and I've experienced this many, many times, is they'll use, you know, someone in the business will end up using your, your fundamental track as the basis, but they'll take a bunch of parts out and they'll start flying in samples from other libraries and stuff. You know, it's very often how the, the movie trailer business works. Those, you know, the source is being drawn from a great number of places. Well, several years ago, my very good friend and colleague, Kevin Key of Skinny Puppy, Kevin and I were commissioned to compose a very specific library for horror film music and particularly trailers. Yeah, during that time, there was just not a lot of like good library music available for that sort of thing. So we formed a side project called Scaremeister. Well, ultimately we invited another incredible collaborator that I've worked with for years named Traz Damji. We asked Traz to join the Scaremeister project as an equal contributing member. And I was so excited about that. You know, I knew this was a great opportunity and there is nothing like the power of a collaboration. When you put the right team of people together, unbelievable things things happen. Yeah, I'm not sure how we got this language into the contract, but somehow we were able to release this thing on our own a couple of years after it had been kind of infiltrated into the film business. So we took advantage of that, of course, and we released this project under Scaremeister. It's on Metropolis Records, and it's uh, the first release that we did was called 31 Spirits. So for today's session, and as we lead up to Halloween, I thought, why not dig into one of these awesome cues from that project, pull up the multi-track, and sort of break down what we did to create this cue. This particular track is called She's Possessed. It's a little over 90 seconds, and uh, oh man, this makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck. Check this out.
Well, one of the many reasons that I love collaborating with Kevin Key is that when I open up a demo track from Kevin, from the, something that he's done in his own studio, when I open up those tracks in my own DAW, there's just about one thing that's guaranteed. Not one of those sounds was generated with any kind of library that exists in the world today. Well, this practice that Kevin's been up to for pretty much his whole career of, of creating sounds that really have not existed before, this is something that has inspired me to do very much the same thing, to try and reach less for libraries and reach more for gear and, and literally create your own sounds from scratch. Because honestly, that kind of approach can very much separate the kind of thing that you're doing from a lot of other stuff that's out there. And this project is a classic example of that. Yeah, absolutely, I use some library sounds. It's just that 95% of what I hear in Scaremeister is just, so unique. I mean, let's for an instant just solo out the main piano line that Kevin sent me as part of the demo. I love the detuning in these pianos, but it is just twisted. Check this. Absolutely, for me personally, it just raises the hair on the back of my neck. I mean, that is the perfect kind of thing to just creep something out. The whole noise track that Kevin created on the intro of this thing, check this out. When I went to restore this session and I went back to the old TDM session, I noticed that every single track that Kevin had given me, I had pitched up 30 cents. Well, over the years, this has definitely happened a number of times and that part of that process of Kevin's of coming up with all of those original sounds and generating everything from scratch, there's always the potential of tuning issues to come into the picture, right? This is my preferred method. Rather than try and chase down the tuning when I do overdubs, I would much rather just sort of look at that original bass session and let's get that thing into concert pitch so that I can actually add instrumentation to it myself and collaborate without going crazy. So yeah, that's very typical. Kevin will provide me a really solid melody idea, very strong kind of main part of a song. And I'll pull that up in my own DAW and then just kind of build a track around it. Do some arrangement, do some moving around. So I've soloed up a bunch of sounds that came from mostly from my own proprietary library, but what a great job these sounds do in combination to create tension and to build the ramp towards the end of this cue. Check it. Yeah, and the live drums that I added to this cue came from one of my old DAT tapes that I call sample DATs, right? I mean, back in the day, just about every time I recorded a drum kit in a real studio with mics and everything, I would just about every time take the time to sample that whole kit. Even if the drummer would gone home, I'd go into the studio later at night and put everything in record and I'd just like sample everything. And very often what I would do is I'd get the drummer at the very end of the session when we were finished all our tracking, I would just throw in a dat and I would usually say, just throw down a bunch of parts for me, like jam out a part at this tempo and then jam out a part at this tempo and just give me some, some kind of big live sounding drums that, that I might be able to sample and reuse later. That's exactly where this thing came from. Unsoloed, that thing is so, so effective. Check it. And here's something I will often do is come up with a really solid kick drum sound and double it with a bass note. Really effective.
with some distortion on those last four hits. And I've mentioned this in past sessions, but often just taking that root bass note and just adding one single bass note that is just playing the, the root of the, of the key, really, really effective, as in this case. creates a really good pulse, you know, it kind of creates that heartbeat. One kind of common thing that's going on as everything else is ramping up, this one thing just kind of trudges along and maintains that kind of heartbeat. Yeah, I went into my own pretty extensive collection of guitar samples and found these really effective, like high harmonic things that just add so much tension. Great way to ramp that build. So I hope this session inspires you to not only write and compose some really creepy and scary horror cues, but to really start pushing your own envelope and, and sort of start moving away from some of those available libraries and start building on your own.